having been uh, victorious, they now have a tall order ahead of them uh, against the number one seeded team. Uh, we're going to be jumping into the number uh, two match now as uh, seed number three and number six are going to be facing off. It's Method to Madness versus Alternate Attacks. And we are already underway with attack number one, it's soon. Yeah, and we can see something which was kind of to be expected. We see Alternate running those ring bases. Those ring bases are so scary. And I mean, I think Alternate is going is the best team and probably pushing right now from the competitive scene. They have so many players at the top in the top 10 in the global leaderboards and that's exactly why they're up there or one of the reasons why they're up there they're building those annoying bases so whenever you're facing a ring base in legends or anywhere with those town of 14 walls around the town hall well blame alternate kind of like their base builders are just incredible so let's take a look at how those super witches can deal with that town of the range of those super witches which is bigger than for example bolus or super wizards is normally a great answer to those ring bases the town hall finally is going down now it's all about the back end can this back end hold strong or was this push big enough to take down the entire base any tennis player knows that a strong backhand will be a big uh, advantage going into the last stages of the match and it seems like the same is true here of this attack by M2 Ben but I just gotta say since we didn't really tip off the war first you have got to give credit props acknowledge the victorious stance uh, shown by alternate attacks in the months leading up to this uh, event in the years leading up to this event Alternate Attacks is the reigning world champion, having shown dominance this year by conquering eight uh, local community events and showing up in the world's warm-up, as well as the second ESL Meisterschaft Championships. They are the team to beat this season, uh, and M2 has really got their work cut out for them. Ben doing a fantastic job with these witches toward the later end, the super witches rather, building up strength and carrying through, even with healers to back him up, uh, and plenty of time to get that three star. But that by no means uh, is going to give you any breathing room against the arguably the best clan in the world, our alternate attacks. Yeah, but I feel like we praised alternate now too much because it is methods <laughs> to madness who are starting off with a three star on the base of boom. A really great base identification. We're talking about how super witches struggle right now in the meta. But at the same time, those super witches are such a great counter to those ring bases. And we were seeing exactly why that's the case. And you can, well, make sure to copy those, those pet combinations. And there's a pretty unusual one. It's the queen with the owl the reason for that is that this owl is working pretty much as a coconut pet and what does this mean well it is not triggering the traps on their own but loons which are flying ahead can trigger those black mines and the owl well that, that's kind of the pet which has the uh, not the greatest job but the owl can tank those black mines this means you're not losing any healers there was the reason for that we have the next attack coming in and that is yo-yo and let's go he is coming in with his lado that's the army composition which he's running right now in legends and he was at least earlier today rank two in the world so let's see if he can show this off why exactly he is the rank two player right now in the entire world in Legends League. You're right to give props to Method to Madness, a strong attack to start things off, but just because they've won the battle, I'm not convinced yet that they're going to win the war. Having defeated Method to Madness in the pre-qualifiers, alternate attacks is definitely uh, the team that I'm expecting to take the victory here, and no better way to start it off than by Yojo23. His eyes will stare into your soul and learn its darkest, deepest secrets. Find out where you've placed your traps and then plan directly around it. A quick hit already to start off with, uh, with a Sui Queen up top claiming that town hall and taking down that Lava Hound as well. Hopping through the puffs uh, with ferocity. He's built up a fantastic start for this Maloon Strike, Kitsu. Yeah, and now everything is pushing into that bottom side of the base, into that eagle. And the great thing about this Lado strategy is that you have no expensive opener, which means you have a ton of spells left for the back end. And that's why it's so hard to execute the strategy. It's all about using your spells and everything correctly. And so far, it's not looking too bad. Those loons are trying to get into the base. He has still one rage left, which he can use. 
as soon as he wants but this one sweeper on the left is giving him a rough time now he's freezing that up make sure that he's pushing inside another freeze on the right side. that's the difficulty about the strategy so many things are happening at the same time he has one freeze one haste left and this is exactly why he's the rank two player right now in the world this is just so impressive try this attack strategy at home just try it only once when he can see you that is so so hard to execute and yo-yo make it look like it is nothing like this attack was so smooth one minute left on the clock and this attack is going to be the comeback already for alternate they're tying things up and this means it's three to three after one attack each woody the dark archon of destruction yo-yo 23 just the sound of his name sends shivers fear and trembling into the hearts of lesser men mortals beware everyone knows that a yo-yo starts at the top and drops back down what comes up must go back down and true to his name yo-yo has <laughs> dropped this base to the ground confidence reigning supreme uh for this alternate attack squad holding toe to toe uh, with their opponents now a three star has been met with a triple right on the other side a perfect start for this incredible war let's see whether method to madness can keep pace the tempo is really picking up now and it's oh. psw the next striker moving in with mass drag the first time that we've seen that so far today it's yeah and that's another ring base oh my goodness those ring bases are typically so annoying to plan on and this base looks really interesting and already i'm going to see that base a ton in legend most likely we have the queen and the royal gem really close to the town hall so they can protect that town hall and make it really annoying to face we have the lightnings coming in because those ring bases are so stacked so he wants to take down the sweeper he wants to take down the multi fern tower now he's using bats to tank their defense for the for the electric dragons and a couple of loons that is a genius opening the fun is created at the top side by the heroes the right side is taken down by the electric dragon and now those dragons can enter the base and it's all about them taking down the rest of the base and the town of poison is the thing we have to look out for because those dragons deal a ton or take a ton of damage from those from this town hall poison but there's the blimp making its way into the town hall to make sure that the dragons are taking no damage but the hound is getting lured the hound is getting lured and that might be a really bad thing for the attack but so far nothing had targeted that that hound would eat. a tricky start but psw has still got a lot of forces left he told us before that poison the war began that the poison. mass drag is his favorite strat they're taking a lot of punishment in the core there with that multi-target inferno burning through so many attacking troops and there just doesn't seem to be anything that's able to make it to the core just yet a royal champion doing her best to back up from the ground and give a little bit more firepower here but soaking additional shots from that cannon and just with one more dragon ahead a high in the skies it doesn't look like that's going to be enough a late free spell from psw is going to give no more assistance to the rest of this hit and with 79 percent you got to wonder how much more he's got left in the tank none at all a, a really heartbreaking defeat for method to madness to come starting off with a three star and then to back it up with such a small uh showing it, it it's actually kind of a heartbreaker now to just watch this archer pluck away at the dark elixir storage <laughs> at the bottom of the base it it, it kind of seems emblematic of what we are going to experience in the rest of this war itsu you've got a a valiant effort being made by an upstart contender against a gigantic base uh, that will smile staring down at you uh, as you do your best to, to finish it off. Vale is just uh, a fantastic base builder and well known for having an amazing uh, a, a approach to every single contact uh, with the enemy. I'm rambling at this point, but he's done a great job setting it up uh, and denying access to uh, PSW. Congrats uh, on the defense to alternate attacks. Yeah, and their base builds are just incredibly skilled. Like, so Iron, like we want to mention the base builds as well. So Iron, Auxilla, and Bob the Builder. They're just incredible with this base building. And the reason why those, like this team is using ring bases is because ring bases are really punishing if there is a fail in there it is a really low percentage as we just have seen this percentage with below 80 percent can be already a game changer only seven 70 uh, 79 percent with this zap dragon attack is already a huge defense 
for the alternate squad. So let's see if they can use this and put pressure on the Method to Madness team. But hey, they're using ring bases as well. But at the same time, I have to say, I don't know if you want to ring ba uh, use ring bases against the best team from Legends League because those ring bases are their bread and butter, basically. And Boom is coming in with that Pekka Smash with the Yeti Blimp to open things up. But there's the double black mine. The question is, is he getting enough value with that Blimp now? A perennial MVP from a world championship squad, the captain of alternate attacks. Boom is considered by many not just to be one of the greatest players who is competing right now, but one of the greatest esports competitors in the Clash of Clans world championship history. This guy is a three-star machine. Five triples out of the seven attacks in the pre-qualifiers with a 97.3 average destruction, the second best performance on this lineup. And here to show why, once again, he is uh, just such a dominant force on offense. He's brought an amazing complement of spells to back up this big, deep round push with witches and pekkas, a heavy offense and a somewhat atypical, not quite off meta, uh, but certainly not the aerial assault that we've seen in the past from alternate attacks. What do you make up of how this hit is shaping up so far, Enzo? So far, it looks really promising. The Queen has to take down the Tower quick, though, because otherwise the Tower is dealing a ton of damage, and now it's coming down to how the Queen steps. If the Queen is stepping inside that poison of the Tower, she's getting slowed, getting slowed down so much. The Ooh. Invisibility spell is saving that Queen really nicely. The bottom side of your screen, you can see all of the P.E.K.K.A. getting into that outer ring, beating down all of those defense. The World Champion is taking on the multi Fern Tower now. And the queen has still another rage and this is a perfect attack versus one of those ring bases get your queen inside the core and get the pekka and your own king in the second inner ring to make sure this base is smashed using the queen ability last second to save her watch ability is still not used either and that should finish off the last couple of buildings and this should yet again be another three star for alternate as i said i am not sure if you want to use ring bases against alternate i think <laughs> i think they struggle more against under three star bases so it's a kind of big question mark for me but hey this is two out of two for alternate and they're showing in this first match already why exactly they are defending the uh, why are the, why they are the defending world champion starting over the yeti blimp we can show that in the replay um, taking down the eagle nice and early. That eagle is such a strong defense that he wants to take that down early. And then just keep raging the queen, keeping her alive. Perfect invisibility spell. And with this, second three star with a really strong army composition. I think what really separates the two-star strikers from the three-star super chads is the ability to respond on the fly against unpredictable burst damage. Those giant bombs getting a lock from an enemy archer queen, those are the times that try men souls. Boom has shown time and again that his adaptation, his quick reflexes are all you need uh, to make sure that that perfect setup is followed up uh, with, with a Perfect execution as well. The three star on the board for alternate attack keeps their hopes of a perfect war uh, alive. Relative to Method to Madness, they are already far ahead out of the first two hits, but uh, we've seen in the past, Marcos Gaming versus Vatang, that uh, just because you get the lead early on doesn't mean that you can necessarily hold on to it. If anyone's gonna turn this thing around now, we have got to expect it to be M2 Love. A strong hitter uh, from Method to Madness. He picked up four three stars out of the seven hits in the free qualifier uh let's see what he's got now he's coming in on the ground once again with uh big old pekka's out in front to smash through i have noticed that they picked up uh in favor relative to yetis and do you want to make any sort of comment about the changes in the meta recently that have led to that itsu yeah the biggest change is kind of the spring trap it's one of the traps where it's like just no counterplay for the attacker because well how do you counterplay a spring trap just use a pecker and just don't trigger it with that basically because the spring trap is not working against the Pekka and we can see why it's getting so f um, so much use by all of the pros. The Warden ability, perfect timing to catch the Pekka around the town of the town should be taken down soon. But now it's yet again all about the town of Poison and we can see the difference kind of a lot of troops went inside the base. And now let's see if it's enough power for the back end. So far it's looking really good. The Nado though is rotating the queen a bit into the poison. We can see how slow the screen attacking is so incredible slow inside that poison. 
But the back end so far is getting crushed by all of those troops. So this base looks pretty much wrecked with this Pekka Smash approach. So there is no chance. Last buildings are going down. And we see yet again another free star. This match is incredible. I feel, I feel like the first match was a bit slow starting. The teams were really nervous. But those two teams coming out swinging. And this is getting showcased in the results so far. We have two out of three for the method to madness squad and that one was a really really fast strike yeah if you had blinked at the start you might have missed the entire setup there into love definitely a quick striker and it makes a lot of sense from a tactical perspective you want to get as much firepower on the board as quickly as possible to eliminate as many defenses early on while you're still able to make use of short timed abilities like that grand warden eternal tome things like uh you know rage spells getting your troops directly on top of defenses with jump spells all uh critically important to apply maximum firepower as quickly as possible early on with that attack strat it's not the sort of long haul marathon run like you see with a lot of queen walks uh toward the outer edges you really do leverage that heavy hitting knockout punch uh and then just let kind of the rest of it trickle through that also helps out a lot if you do wind up in a tiebreaker position uh because you get a really short spin time or not spin time a, a really short time remaining uh, at the end of the attack so congrats there to method Nomadis. going toe to toe still behind relative to alternate attacks position but it's up to the linade now to keep his team ahead with another triple moving in with that try trusted <laughs> and reliable hog take a look at lassie combo. <laughs> lassie is hunting down those archers to make sure they have no chance to take or like to deal any damage on that queen and well, sadly, we have to say Lenade so far is not having the best tournament of his life. He was not having the best day at that pre-qualifier. So we have to see if he can turn that around. But maybe because that's of his strategy pool, he really likes to use this Queen Charge Hybrid. And something which a lot of players already have noticed is Queen Charge Hybrid is not one of those stronger attack strategies anymore on Town of 14. Now, Town of, of Town 13 was like the strongest attack strategy or one of the strongest attack strategies in the game. But now on Tower 14, this has changed completely. Those Hogs, those Miners are not as tanky anymore on those really, really high damage buildings of Tower 14 and especially of that Poison. So really good that he's taken down this, this, yeah, the Town Hall early and the Poison. And now he has the King entering into that Eagle compartment and the Hybrid is starting in between. And this so far is an opening. It's looking really promising. So let's see if you can push the Hybrid through and make this attack work, Woody. You are right to point out the difficulty that Lenny had in the free qualifier, just a single three-star strike out of the seven attacks that he made. But things are a lot different during the free qualifiers when you have a lot less time to plan your hit. You have to be ready for rapid fire back-to-back -back strikes as opposed to the setup that they've got right now. A lot more time to think, plan, strategize, and perfect your execution. Lene looks uh, very strong as he moves still through into the core of the space. Grand Warden backing up the bulk of this push uh, without any big key defensive structures really kind of standing out to me except for that scatter shot raining down fire on everything in the core there just hasn't really been a whole lot to target onto it and that can be the death knell for a raid this archer queen is still happy and healthy on the outer edge but without any additional support troops to move back in it looks like that's going to come up short of the three star it's yeah and it looks like History repeats for Lenate. I don't know. Maybe they just have to say that he has to do some other attacks because we all know that, that Lenate is capable of doing basically any attack strategy. But Queen Charge Hybrid so far has just not worked for him, it feels like. And sadly, he is going from 1 out of 7 to 1 out of 8. And that is really unfortunate with a quite low percentage. But at the same time, he is 3% above what method to madness just did in their first or like in their second attack i think so this is still a percentage percentage lead with like three buildings overall and this is well a lead which they can try to keep and now up to method to madness if they three star the pressure is on alternate and then they have to yet again three star as well otherwise if they defend now this is this would be kind of relaxing and give them some power back in this mind game play, which is happening always kind of like behind the scenes. And we saw yet again, the Queen Charge Hybrid just did not work out. The pet combination for Queen Charge Hybrid is pretty classic. That one, what you can see on your screen right now, 
but Queen Charge Hybrid overall in the current meta is just not working that great. And yet again, we have another ring base. Really, they... <laughs> Archet wants to have Method to Madness suffer. Those ring bases are really not nice to plan on. We have the invisibility spell. Oh, that was genius! Redirecting the Hound and triggering the Black Mine. And with this, that limb should reach its target. And now we have the invisibility spell onto the Super Wizards, which are in that clan castle, taking down what? that clan castle. And now it's all about the town going down as well. And this so far is looking pretty promising, Woody. There it goes, another spell on top just to seal the deal. M2's LG goes straight for the heart of this base and knocks down that key structure. We now just have a ring around the rosy that he's gonna try to effectuate here on the outer edges. It's tough to get the funneling job done uh, when you've got such a big long wall staring straight at you, but knowing that you've already taken out the town hall is a big weight off your mind. He's probably gonna try to make uh, an attack similar to what we saw with that previous Lava Hound strike, uh, except rather than going counterclockwise, I'm expecting a clockwise positioning this time, uh, seeing as he's already kind of cut through from that two o'clock position straight into the core. Uh, he's already kind of uh, like kind of turned this base into a C shape, basically. Uh, and it looks like he's going to be starting off on the right side and then kind of swooping down and around back up to the top. Yeah, but one of the worst things for Lalo are those core multi inferno towers. So as long as he's not getting, like, taking those out with his queen, this is going to be a really unfortunate ending for him. Because how do you deal with those core multi inferno towers? They just recently got a huge buff on Town of 14 with this additional beam. Queen ability to take down the Royal Champion. The queen is still, like, backtracking oh. now. So, but I don't think that she has enough power to take one of those Mutant Fermion Towers out. And now take a look at the Mutant Towers carefully and take a look at how much damage they can provide. The Loons are slowly approaching the core. Red Mines are coming up. And now the Mutant Fermion Towers, the triple Mutant Fermion Tower. That is going to be scary, Woody. This might have been an adaptation by LG, recognizing that the multi-infernos in the core hadn't gone down to the Queen Strike, choosing now to go from the top and swoop around in that uh, counterclockwise Ooh, order. He has a ton of balloons left, but we've seen how deadly those inferno beams can get. And without any way to direct troops quicker than just one remaining haste spell, he has really got his work cut out for him against a massive base still standing strong. That scatter shot in the bottom corner would have uh, just been the death knell for anything that could have gotten through but yep just like you predicted it to double multi-target inferno still standing at the end here too much to handle uh for that law loon strike yeah i just think the opening the blimp did not get a much uh, did not get enough value those ice golems are a huge counter to a blizzard if you're asking why well the reasoning is that those um blizzard is basically relying on them free hitting during the invisibility spell is active. And we can see that right there on your screen, the ice golems freezing up the uh, the super wizards. And with this, they cannot dish out the damage. They cannot take down one or even two um, multi inferno towers. And this was the end of the attack really early on. And yet again, we see a 73%. And we already saw Linnate had one of the fails and already not the highest percentage, but those percentages are even lower, which means the base building crew of Alchen is doing yet again an amazing job of identifying the weak spot of their opponent. I'm really looking forward to see if Alchen is going to pick anti three star bases later on against other opponents. And maybe they just say, hey, method to madness. They're not pushing, they're not knowing how to beat those bases. And we have already the next attack coming in from Alchen. And this time around, it's us. And he is the only player in this tournament which is still perfect over the entirety of the pre qualifiers. Starting off with the Skelly Donut. And it seems like, though, the, town, uh, the clan cast is not going down, Woody. Seven attacks and seven triples, but he might have just tripped up on this bottom compartment. The standing CC there is getting repaired back up now by the builders walking around, and that could spell a lot of trouble for him. Lots of troops going to be streaming out there now uh, and slowing down this Archer Queen. Giga Inferno already heating up and starting to cause her a lot of trouble. She pops her ability and takes Ooh. down the Town Hall. At least we can say that Ask got the first star cleared off. Uh, but alternate attacks definitely want to get a triple here, trying to pull ahead on the star race and not just go toe to toe on that tiebreaker. Method to Madness has been slowing down, but alternate attacks don't want to pump the brakes just yet. 
Yeah, and the pathing which he has provided is not too bad. And one thing which we have to keep in mind, this base is running four ground expos. Four ground expos, and this is now an air attack, which means, well, the loons are not get like not being too worried about those those ground expos. And we have the Lalo slowly sorting from this top right side, pushing into the single front of the scatter is nicely getting frozen up. The warning village is still not even used from that beginning. And now it's all about those headhunters. Those headhunters are making their way into the into the base, facing the enemy royal champion, taking her down. And now it's all about taking down the enemy queen. The queen is dropping as well. And Woody, this attack is actually not looking too bad. A brilliant spread through the center of the base there knocks down some really important targets. And when you look at what's left, there's no more scatter shots. There's no more multi-target infernos. The town hall's finished off and the eagle is long gone. These uh, balloons are still going to have their work cut out for them against Tesla's bombs and anything else that could pop up along the bottom side of the base. But it is not guaranteed at all uh, that LG will be able to hold on here with the Stone Slammer popping out and sending even more balloons in now. It's just a question of whether there is any big splash damage to finish off that pack. And it's not looking likely at this point. I think that they might just have it at two. 30 more seconds and there's not too much left as you said. No more red mines most likely. I think most of them already got triggered. One bitter hut is still shooting, but this one bitter hut will oh. not make the difference. There was only one red mine. Uh. I was already getting afraid a little bit as well. But I think overall 18 seconds should be enough. And us is still perfect. Eight out of eight in this first three qualifier and qualifier. And he's showcasing why he is so good. So at this point, Alternate is leading in stars and percentage. So method to madness they need they really need their three star to stay in that match and, we're, and then, then they have to hope for one of the best defenses of this tournament so far but i don't think that this is a likeliness because we have alternate still with the world's 2020 mvp on their bank shield to attack and we can see yet again the post attack stats of the skelly donut lalo which is a really complicated attack strategy and even though us kind of yeah, fade at the beginning, I want to say. He, he should just pull it off. That was incredible, Woody. Really nicely done. You throw him for a loop, and he will keep on swinging back hard and strong. The finish finalizer, <laughs> Ast, keeps his positioning at the top of the pack with perfect eight for eight triples. But we have got no time to slow down now because we have got someone that everyone rooting for Method Madness has had on their minds for a long time now. The captain of this squad, he's on a mission to take down alternate attacks after their close matchup where Method of Madness was defeated by a near 0.6% in the pre-qualifiers. He has got the rage in his eyes, the fire in his belly, and it's time to put it all on the line, charging straight through with a queen walk on the outer edge, knocking down plenty of structures and his sights set on an eagle artillery that seems to be a bit vulnerable here at two. Can he make it in? Yeah, but there's just so much damage behind the eagle. So yes, you can reach that eagle easily, but the damage which is behind is just incredibly high. We have the multi firm tower with the warden, the expos, the scatter shot, and the tunnel itself. So there's a ton of damage. And if you're getting even further inside, well, there's the double sweeper pointing into your way. And having a sweeper on your queen, and especially on the heaters, is not the greatest thing to have. The Eagle's activated, but it's taken down quickly. Now it's all about how quick can you take down this defending clan cast. The Hound has been taken down. There's the minion to support the poison, taking down those lava pups quickly. The Ice Goblin is freezing everything up. And now it's all about this Queen Charge into the core of the base, into the heart of this base with two rages remaining. But he's choosing and going for the invisibility spell first. And then most likely for the rage really soon. And he has the Lalo still for the back end, but only one Hound and a couple of loons to take this base out. And we have one multi front also on the back end interesting invisibility spell to make sure the queen pathing is better and there we go the air part has started and you can see on the queen side as well the sweeper are coming in and there is a lot of damage on that queen woody what do you think oh. can he make this oh double giant bombs exploding sweepers pushing the healers back and the queen goes down a beautiful queen charge goes the distance but can't keep up with traps of plenty knocking that poor queen silly we've got a massive wallow strike but i think it just started off a bit late here itsu 
He still has got a, a hope and a prayer, but with a multi-target Inferno burning through so many balloons, a lot of point structures still up on the outer edge. Tesla's and Archer Tower is ready to finish off what little remains from this strike. Beige had a great strat planned here, but just lost the Archer Queen a bit too soon and didn't have enough time, frankly, on the outer edge to get that Lawloon uh, all of the way around to finish off the job. A hearty congratulations on a well-placed fight, but ultimately this is going to be a disappointment for Methods of Madness. A two-star 76% might be the end of their hopes for advancement over alternate attacks. Yeah, and that's exactly the case, the reason why Alton are using those legend bases. And we can take a look yet again on that queen. Queen ability, but double giant bomb in combination with that poison, taking her down in her ability. And yeah, 76%. And that's exactly what I was talking about earlier with the legend bases. If you're failing, you're failing really, really bad percentage-wise. And this is something which those pros have to um, kind of like worry about as well. Like if they're failing, yes, that's one part. But at the same time, they have to save the percentage to make sure that percentage-wise, everything is staying close. And take a look at the bottom right on the percentage game. 95 to 85, that's a huge gap. And now we see Vale coming in with another Lalo, making everything invisible. And he tries to go for the scatter and for the expos this is what it looks like so far another invisibility spell the scatter should go down soon uh, should go down soon as well and the multi front tower is dropping as well and take a look at that value that is already looking great and well that's kind of the point as well if you're building a ton of ring bases and testing those you obviously know how to attack those ring bases as well right Clearly they do, and clearly that advantage is powering through. All Vale needs here is to get a two-star, but the sight of this mastermind marching onto the arena is enough to send shivers to the spine of defenders. A veil of tears is the only way to describe the clan uh, planning room now for Method to Madness. They are surely uh, certain that the dominant alternate attack squad finishing off with Vale uh, is going to claim victory over them now. It's just a matter of time and watching uh, how a master is going to go about this work. Heroes are going to be collapsing in over there on the 9 o'clock position, finding their way through layer after layer of walls with the assistance of these super wall breakers to crack down uh, and get an easy shot at that eagle artillery, which hasn't even he opened up yet. Early he start is already halfway through this hit now, Itsu. Yes, yeah, so, sorry for interrupting, but he wants that tunnel. He has another wall break to get into that tunnel compartment. He wants that tunnel with his hero push. And take a look at the value. This is just incredible. The king ability, queen ability, everything. Where is the base? Where is that base? The base has just disappeared at this point. Tunnel is going down, and one of the deadliest uh, defenses in this game has been taken out by just the heroes in the beginning. The entirety of the Lalo City still in the beginning and the multi fire tower should go down as well to the queen ability and this attack so far is looking like the mvp he was for the 2020 world championship the lado is getting through and this is looking really really good woody my grandpa had to say you gotta wake up pretty early if you want to beat me and i think that the same thing applies here for vale uh brilliant planner with plenty of time on his hands and so much experience to back it up he has just dealt the death knell to Method to Madness, finishing off this final base with another triple. That puts the star total for alternate attacks up to an incredible 14, the strongest we've seen uh, out, out of the two the three clans. Uh, besides alternate attacks, 14 stars really uh, reigning in up on top. Congratulations to them. They will be advancing on uh, to face off against MCES later. Definitely a match to look forward to.